Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Anushka. Here's another episode of the Daily Roundup. Yogi Adityanath, the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, has responded to the killing and mob violence in Bulandshahar in a review meeting that was held on Tuesday. The message was clear. Cow slaughter needs to stop. All cow slaughterers, also known as Muslims, need to be taken to task. This could include beating anyone up, anywhere, on even the slightest suspicion of cow slaughter. Mobs just seem to manufacture themselves out of thin air, armed with weapons, ready to unleash some rage. He did not condemn the main accused or the mobs for actively carrying out the murder of a police officer in broad daylight. So after this, when the police officer's family is offered some kind of compensation, a job is offered to one of his family members, it's like an insult. The very system and ideology that propagates this kind of violence is being supported on the one hand, and then some monetary compensation is being given on the other. The main accused, Bajrang Dal activist Yogesh Raj, has been absconding since Tuesday. While he's the key accused in the murder of Subodh Kumar, he's also a complainant in the alleged cow slaughter case. A 11-year-old and a 12-year-old have also been detained and questioned by the police in the cow slaughter case. They were in Bulandshahar at the time of the incident, and yet they've been picked and they have an FIR filed against them. You heard the ages right, that's 11 and 12-year-olds. In Telangana, several farmers' organizations gave a call to farmers and agricultural workers to reject the political parties that have failed to address the agricultural distress in the build-up to the December 7 assembly elections. The organizations include Telangana Farmers Joint Action Committee, Ritu Swarajya Vedika and Telangana Ritanga Samiti. Representatives of Ritu Swarajya Vedika have said that despite numerous protests by farmers' organizations, mainly demanding that the government extend the farmer scheme benefits to tenant farmers as well, K. Chandrasekhar Rao turned a blind eye to this demand. The Telangana Rashtra Samiti manifesto for the upcoming elections doesn't really talk about the issue of the tenant farmers and agricultural workers. The Ritu Bandhu scheme, which offers an investment allowance of rupees 4,000 per acre per year, and the Ritu Bhima scheme, which offers rupees 5 lakh insurance to the farmers, has excluded over 15 lakh tenant farmers by not even considering them as cultivators. Farmers' rights activists argue that the TRS government has failed the farmers on numerous issues, such as loan waiver promises, issuing of loan eligibility cards to the tenant farmers as per the existing License Cultivator Act 2006, issue of land deeds to podu cultivators, MSP, adulterated seeds and pesticides and so on. It is estimated that more than 4,000 farmers committed suicide in the state in the last four years, which is the highest in the country. As per a survey conducted earlier this year, more than 75% of the farmers who have committed suicide since 2014 are tenant farmers. In 2017, the Century Mill, which is located in Madhya Pradesh and owned by the Pirlas, was sold off to Wear It Global Limited, a corporate entity based out of Kolkata. Over 84 acres of land, buildings, machinery, etc. were sold off for a meagre price of Rs 2.5 crore to Wear It. In protest, 900 workers of the mill staged a walkout in October 2017. According to activists, the Birlas have been in a legal tussle over the land, wanting to get rid of the property. The workers believe that the Birlas wanted to sell off the company, and in order to do so, the company needed to show that it wasn't making any profit. And shutting it down seemed like a profitable way to exit the situation. Of course, the fate of the workers, the fact that the skills that they've acquired in the mill is not something that they can put to use anywhere else was not given due consideration. The workers hail from different states of the country. Many have been at the mill for 25 years. With the subsequent intervention of Medha Patkar and the Janta Shramik Sangh, the workers found legal representation 
as well as a sense of being united against the Birlas. With enormous pressure building over the Birlas through regular protests, the issue was also addressed by the Industrial Tribunal. The Tribunal passed two orders earlier this year in favour of the workers. The first one declaring the Business Transfer Agreement, that's the BTA, between the Birlas and Werit to be ingenuine. And the second order cancelling this BTA. The High Court of Madhya Pradesh also upheld the Industrial Tribunal's decision regarding the underestimation of the value of the property as well as non-payment of stamp fee. The workers had been participating in the mass agitation and it was in this context that the Birla management initiated a dialogue with the struggling workers and staff members after May 2018. Bowing down to the workers' demands, they agreed to negotiate, putting forth a few options. The workers did not want to take a VRS and wanted to work. Also, they did not want at any cost their mill to go to another organisation so that it could be sold off again. The transfer of property is being seen as a huge victory for the workers' unity in the region. Currently, the logistics of the transfer are being discussed with all the stakeholders. On December 3rd, the workers have submitted in writing their acceptance of the proposed settlement. This really gives confidence to workers, workers' unions, their struggles and their movement against neoliberal entities. Hikes in fuel prices concern and impact not only citizens of developing nations such as India, but also those living in more so-called developed countries. The Yellow West movement in Paris was a response to the hike in taxes on petrol. For the past month, thousands across France have been wearing yellow vests and have been vehemently protesting against the fuel tax hike. Over 280,000 participated in a number of demonstrations across the country. The protesters came onto the streets, blocking important intersections, roundabouts, gas stations, etc. Many came from small villages and towns, where living standards are in decline. The government has conceded, and the power of numbers has indeed led the Yellow West to victory, even though it might be short-lived. The President will suspend, for a period of six months, a tax increase on petrol and diesel, which was slated for January next year. This decision came as a part of the government's push to combat climate change by discouraging people from using private vehicles and using public transport instead. It does not take into consideration the fact that the minor increase of a few cents severely affects many users who will not be able to afford cars. That's all we have for you in today's episode of The Daily Roundup. For more news updates, you can always log on to our website www.newsclick.in, follow us on Facebook and visit our YouTube channel.